Pneumonia is an infection in the lungs. With pneumonia, it can start off as a simple upper respiratory infection that can progress into an infection deep in our lung tissue, and that is pneumonia. When we have pneumonia, our lung ability is impaired. Our ability to bring in oxygen and remove carbon dioxide, that's our gas exchange, is impaired because the lungs are infected. Now, I'll read to you here. The infection collects in the lung tissue, causing gas exchange and lung ability to decrease. Now, talked about, it's common for upper respiratory infections to progress into pneumonia. It can happen. It doesn't always happen, but it can happen, especially in these populations like COPD, like patients with chronic diseases. So for example, let's say you're a renal failure patient or a diabetic patient. You have a ton of different chronic conditions that add up. That can cause. What else? Living in a, a long-term care facility like a nursing home. And finally, I have here immune system disorders. So let's say a cancer patient, an HIV patient, you're at a higher risk when, and for a bad outcome as well, actually, when we have pneumonia and getting it in the first place. Now, these are the main signs symptoms you're gonna see with pneumonia. The big thing with pneumonia is we're talking about someone who's just in the beginning stages of pneumonia for someone at a severe stage of pneumonia, they look completely different. Similarities, yeah, but it's a big difference. Let me just paint the picture for you. First, chest pain, shortness of breath, cough, more tired, malaise, body aches, fever, right? Infection, right? Pathway? Now hear me out. Cough with green or yellow sputum, productive cough, short of breath with chest pain. Now the early onset, early onset we think about maybe hearing rails. Think about the infection being like more wet, right? So the secretions are more easily mobilized. They're not hard, not stiff, right? That's what I think about. More commonly, mid to later stage, we hear more ronchi, we hear more wheezing, tight, tighter lungs, secretions are to dry, right? That's what we think about, hardening of the secretions, right? They're getting harder to mobilize. The shortness of breath gets worse. Chest pain gets worse, right? That's the way I think about it. Now, other things. Obviously, get a temperature. They're going to have a fever, right? Now, I put abnormal respiratory rate, heart rate, and blood pressure. What I mean by that is if we have pneumonia, our heart rate is going up, our respirations are going up, and our blood pressure, if it gets severe enough, can be hypotensive in pneumonia patients. Now in severe cases, what do we have? Well, remember our respiratory depression versus failure. So if we're more severe or respiratory failure, right. Well, respiratory failure, what do we get? We get severely low SpO2. We get tired, sluggish respirations that are on the lower side, they're slow. We get cyanosis. We get altered mental status. So this is the worst case scenario for an pneumonia patient. They end up in respiratory failure due to pneumonia. Now we're treating a patient with pneumonia, they have an infection. So first is obviously BSI and protecting yourself. So that's number one, obviously. Now talking about the patient care in itself, how we're gonna help the patient. Well, first thing I think about is oxygen. We wanna get the patient's oxygen back up to 94% or higher, to get them back to a normal SpO2. So whatever oxygen we need to get that done, that's number one. Second thing is don't forget you have a tool in your toolbox, the end tidal CO2. I highly recommend also doing an EKG. Check the heart condition of your patient as well. So remember, we can slip on a nasal end tidal, one, giving oxygen, but two, getting a really great picture of what's going on in the patient's lungs and their respiratory status with end tidal. Don't forget about an EKG. Now, what else? We have nebulizers like albuterol, Duoneb. That's gonna open up the patient's lungs, right? Albuterol acting on the beta 2 receptor bronchodilation. That'd be great. And obviously we have CPAP and BiPAP. Now, what's the big thing about CPAP and BiPAP? What is it gonna do? 
Well, the big thing is, if we have this infection, this over secretion, we have infection in the lung, blocking our normal gas exchange. It's similar to when we think about a heart failure patient where the alveoli has fluid on it or it's closed. Pneumonia is similar in that pathway. You can give CPAP or BiPAP to this patient. Why? It will improve gas exchange, opening the alveoli up and clearing it so we can improve gas exchange in this patient with this bad pneumonia. Now, a lot of you asked in the comments about how to prepare for school, how to get through school, and how to pass NREMT. The first link in the description is a study tool that I give to all my students to accomplish all of that. It's called the Video Vault. Inside the Video Vault is over 480 videos of content, audio files, worksheets, practice quizzes, our community group. What I do in the Video Vault is take all the concepts you need to know to pass school at NREMT, and I break them down simply for you, so that way you just follow along with the videos, you follow the study plan, and you pass. I give my students lifetime access in the first link in the description, and I'll see you on the inside.